My name is Lou Piero, and I am the executrix of the estate of John Visignano. Today I will take you on a visual journey into the world of John. He was born the 12th of 13 kids in Newark, New Jersey at the height of the Great Depression. At 56 years old, he followed the love of his life and fellow artist Betty to Maine. He settled in Owl's Head to do what he loved, paint, woodwork, sculpt, and photography, capturing the beauty and essence of the mid-coast. The first piece you see today is Boys. This was first drawn as a blueprint, if you can see it there on the little, uh, on the little sheet. Uh, each piece meticulously labeled and then cut, painted, and fitted into a wooden frame. Note how ordinary voice, when put in composition and beautifully painted, become other than ordinary. John would tell you, look to the ordinary to find the magnificent. Maine Community Foundation chose to use boys as its annual holiday Christmas card. And now we'll go into the gallery. The first piece on the left you will see is flotilla, acrylic on canvas. You may notice the unusual shape of the frame, the use of dark brown as shadow. Throughout these works, you will notice rounded forms, surprising colors, and the play of light and shadow. I must note here that John made his own frame. Day is done. Just the surprise of dramatic color and the looks of say of non-completeness. John honored the hard-working seafarers of coastal Maine. Day is done tells us it may be done for now, but tomorrow begins anew. Fish collage. Here we see John's sculpture at work. This is a playful piece of smaller fish inside a bigger one. There is a painted shadow that balances again the light and the dark. Swimming lessons. Again, we see John's humor fascination of color. Mama fish guides her young ones while above another world exists. Sundown dock. Another wood inlay piece. Similar colors are seen here but elongating pieces give a counterbalance to the round frame. Five, seven, two, four. Five, seven, two, four gives homage to the Fisher people of Canopscot Bay. Its title brings one to the world of the working men and women who provide the vitality of mid coast Maine. Notice the similarity among the three pieces. I'll let you guess what it is. When John did woodcuts, he would make a schematic, label each piece, cut each piece with his saw, and if he didn't paint it, he would wait, and if he didn't like the paint, he would wait until the piece dried and paint it again. When I showed him Photoshop and how he could instantly change color, his whole world changed. In his 80s, he became a Photoshop expert. <clears throat> Mystic 18 shows us the skill level that he achieved using Photoshop. The overlay and cut pieces make for a photo collage that is otherworldly. Coastal details. Coastal details combines a variety of John's skill sets, embossing, pen and ink, metalwork and found objects, all artfully arranged to depict the environs of the mid-coast.
One of my favorites, Fish Eat Sky. Light and shadow, dark and light. Fish Eat Sky is a magical embodiment of his metalwork complete with a painted shadow. Here the sky is embedded in the fish rather than the fish embedded in the sky. Harry Winkle Sail is another wood inlay that marries purples, blues, and greens and brings the viewer to the peace and quiet of twilight. What's for dinner? What's for dinner is another playful piece by John. You can see that he uses his metal skills, acrylics, and natural elements in the stone. I think the fish are gonna be disappointed in their meal. <clears throat> above and below coastal details. Above and below um, gives uses the collage experience again. Here we see embossing, found objects, and acrylics, linens, all in a composition that are reminders of the beauty and the elements of the mid coast. Me and my shadow. Which one is the real fish? Again, metalwork, acrylic, light and dark, and shadow present a unique composition that is um, elegant and playful. At one time, John was commissioned to uh, paint a bird of paradise for a friend. And he became so enthralled with the design and the metrics of Bird of Paradise that he started to paint a series of them. In this one, we can see the tremendous use of color, the variety of the color, and the sheer energy of uh, the flower and the rose. Caprizio Verde. Fabrizio Verde is, uh, is John's beginnings with uh, abstract. In painting, Capriccio means an architectural fantasy. Capriccio falls under the term landscape painting. Here, green and the abstraction of landscape presents a home, perhaps, for fairies and gnomes. Fuchsia floral, again the bright and brilliant color of a flower, John would say, look to the ordinary and find the magnificent. The close-up of this flower shows us its beauty and its petals, and uh, the color again is uh, brilliant and uh, varied. Lighthouse. Lighthouse is another photo collage that John did in his 80s using Photoshop. Uh, it captures an atmospheric mood so often the case when the fog rolls in on this mid coast. And it offers the um, iconic use of the lighthouse. Not content with just photos, painting, sculpture, John got into embossing. And it may be hard to see in the video, but the background here is white. And he did about 500 of those embossings. But then, typical artist, he decided to make combinations as his first, uh, first love when he was a young painter was collage. So he, put, he started to put strips of color with acrylics into these embossings and make them unique. And notice also the frame, the use of gold around the frame, the inner frame of 
really presents uh, a beautiful um, composition and brings light to the piece. Again, back to his flowers. This is Lavender Iris. When he was a young painter, he would do mostly watercolor. And uh, in the state of New Jersey where he was born, there was a magnificent water, uh, iris garden. And so iris stayed in his, um, his palette of symbols, shall we say. And you notice that even though this is a solitary iris, you're, giving, you're get, getting a myriad of color and form as it gently unfolds its leaves. Back to the abstract. This is Mary in, Qui in Quieto. Mary in Quieto is the sea and in its various forms of color and energy and direction. Uh, Mary invites us to recall the restlessness of the ever-changing sea. And finally, pink and blue flower. We, we may always might think of this as a return to the 60s psychedelic era, but uh, John, this was just John and his ability to see beyond what was there. And um, as a master colorist, this probably shines as the most beautiful and energetic uh, flower that in his collection. So thank you for uh, allowing me to uh, present John's work. Uh, all pieces are for sale and all uh, proceeds will go to uh, a scholarship through the Maine Community Foundation for a deserving Maine student to attend the Maine School of Art and Design in Port. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Heather Burgess. Um, I'm a stained glass artist from Searsport, Maine. Uh, my display here, uh, we have lots of sea life and bird life. Um, I tend to gravitate towards more nature-esque themed things. Um, and I also like to incorporate driftwood into my art. So as you go around, you will see some beautiful pieces of driftwood paired with my art. So if you wanna go in there, we'll take a look. color in my pieces. I don't like to just make birds the color that they are. Um, for instance, we'll see our beautiful loon here is blue and pink and shiny and uh, I just love shiny glass. I love being able to see glass through it. Um, the qualities of glass are endless. There's so many waves and swirls and texture and smooth and just Glass is awesome. As you can tell, I am a glass addict. <laughs> and as we go over here, this has to be probably one of my most favorite pieces that I've ever made. This is tubular coral. Um, and my husband helps make my scans for me. He's a welder actually here in Rockland, Maine um, for Steel Pro. So he helps me with my hooks and my stands um, to help my art come to life. Uh, but if this doesn't sell, it'll be going home with me. <laughs> and then my fabulous friend from high school is a underwater photographer. He's actually a marine biologist. So he takes these amazing photos. And I originally asked him if I could um, take some inspiration for my glass. And he said, I'll do you one better. I'll print out some uh, photos for you to match it and so we kind of did a pairing here so as you go around you'll find his photographs um, I took inspiration from them and made a piece so if you do for instance something like this if you buy the fish you get the photo to go with it so you'll see that we have several it may not be literal but it is something that does match it that is an octopus eye which matches our little miss octopus down there 
One of my favorite glass companies is called Yakagini Glass, and I tend to pull a lot of that glass. Um, for instance, this purple model glass is from them. Um, the, this nice shiny black is Yakagini. It's one of my favorites. So I pull, sometimes I take a piece of glass and go from there, but sometimes it's an idea, so I like to do both. As we go around our big turtle over here, um, it does take a feat of engineering sometimes. Um, this piece is actually five different pieces put together. Um, so it's a little bit hard to install, but once she's up, it's beautiful. So, but as we're going around, we try to make this display go through the rainbow. So we start with purple, blues, greens, yellows, oranges, and just try to make it flow. And then one of my most popular items, which a lot of people know me for, are these cute little scrappy bird guys. Um, they're all so cute. They each have their own personality. I wanted to try to find a way to take my glass and um, use the scraps so I wasn't wasting as much too. So a little way to recycle and bring life to these little guys. They're just adorable. But yeah, so that's me in a nutshell. Um, if you have any questions or you want to get a hold of me, um, you can go on my website, theglassfeathercove.com, or you can visit me on Facebook at The Glass Feather Cove, or I'm also on Instagram and TikTok. So you can reach out and ask any questions.